Hi, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Rich Roberts. I'm a medical doctor and a doctor of biophysics. I trained at Penn and Harvard, and for 24 years, I was a president and CEO in the pharmaceutical industry. Um, my, my objective here is to take a lot of complex science, scientific data for uh, regarding COVID-19 and bring it all down to the, the essential messages or information that you need to know. Obviously, first, the disclaimer, um, don't listen to anything I say, follow the advice of your licensed medical doctor. Uh, secondly, please know I don't make any money on this. There are no commercials. There's nothing to buy. There's no place to contribute. I'm here for you. I'm trying to help you. Lastly, um, I will try to make this as non-scientific as possible. But when I tell you the topics, I will touch it just a little bit of science, but just in a very sort of qualitative way. So if people want to go the, the hard science, the hard numbers, it's all over the place. There's tons of YouTube videos on it from, from medical doctors and other experts. In the, in, there's plenty of um, information of, from the CDC.gov, other governments. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, the picture of COVID-19 is becoming much more clear, but mostly I'm going to concentrate on the United States. Now the topic, oh, there's two improvements this time. First, for the first time ever, I'm using a microphone. So hopefully it's going to come through clearer. Uh, I'm not a professional, you know, video guy. So I'm just trying to, to do the best. And secondly, for the first time uh, in my, you know, my, my short YouTube career here, I'm going to be using a computer with some uh, uh, little uh, notes for myself instead of doing everything just off of my head. Well, the mustard will come off my head. Uh, two other last things. Uh, excuse the beard. I'm in a, we're in a religious period of 33 days now as an Orthodox Jew where, where we don't shave. I can't wait to shave. Um, and lastly, if you like what I say uh, on this channel, please give me a thumbs up and please hit the subscribe button on YouTube so that you, you can get notified of my future videos. Here's the topics for today. Fast order, a lot of stuff. Vaccine safety, including the J&J &J vaccine. Vaccine effectiveness, vaccine necessity. Is the United States clear and free now of the risk from COVID? Biophysics, so that we, a little bit of biophysics understand, so we can help to understand all this confusion about variants, which is very confused in the news. They're not giving you a clear and concise story and also to understand infertility. Then we're gonna discuss infertility, the uh, ability to infect others, potential Chinese origin of the vaccine, of the, vi of the virus, excuse me, and lastly, the anti-vaxxers. So here we go. I'm just going to scroll up a little. Vaccine safety. First of all, before I get into some of the, the science, you, use a little common sense, okay? Do you know anybody who's died from COVID-19? Do you know anybody? It's either a relative, a parent, a grandparent, a cousin, uh, someone else in your community, many people in your community that have died from COVID-19? Do you know anybody? You, if, unless you've been living under a rock, you probably know no, three, five, 10, 20, 30 people that have died. May not be your direct close friends, but it might be a relative. It might be, um, you know, like I said, someone who lives three blocks over from you. You know, you know, lots of people have died of COVID-19. Now, how many people do you know that died from the vaccine? How many? I can tell you how many you know. Zero. You don't know any. Unless you're like one in 20 million or something, one in 30 million people in the country, you don't know anybody who died from the vaccine. But you know lots of people that died from COVID. So use some common sense about the vaccine, first of all. If it's going to protect you from COVID, um, it is way, way, way much safer to take the vaccine than not. Another thing was there's a medical doctor who is, um, unfortunately, I'm embarrassed to say he's an Orthodox Jew, and he put out a, he's a little, you know, he's not reliable. And he put out a video saying that there are 500 reported deaths to FDA from the vaccine. And he said, and FDA says for every one report, there's 100 others that were that happened that were not reported. But if you think about that, that makes 50,000 people that died from the vaccine. How come I don't know any? How come you don't know any? Where are they? The truth, the answer is they don't exist. It's just another wacky, anti-vaxxer, crazy idea out there. So first, use your common sense. It's clear that, that this vaccine is very, very safe, very, very safe. And as you'll see later, it's, it's shown this being effective and it's really helping to stop the spread. Now, the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines 
which are mRNA vaccines, have been shown to be very, very safe. If you get two vaccinations, after the first one, people, many, most people have no reactions, except maybe a little bit in the arm or pain in the arm. It happens with a lot of vaccinations. After the second vaccination, though, see the first, what happens is your immune system has to first see a foreign object. In this case, it could be a virus, could be other things, bacteria and other molecules, allergens, people get allergic to things. Your, your body has to see this outside um, structure or form. Your immune system has to. And then, and then uh, the immune system already has antibodies to attack it and set up an immune response. Or in a case like COVID, your body has to um, learn the shape of that virus or that and that or what the virus, what the, what the vaccine gives you, which is only one of the 29 proteins of the virus, only one of them. And then your body, once it, after the first shot, your immune system will learn and adjust to that shape. So if your body sees that shape again, your body is ready to attack it. Then with the second injection, your immune system is all ready for it. It recognizes that, um, it's called an antigen, but it recognizes that one protein from the virus that you now have, just the one protein, not the 28 others, you're not infected, and the body attacks it. So it's very common after the second vaccination that you will feel sick for about a day, half a day, a day, a day and a half. You take a Tylenol, which is generically called acetaminophen, and everybody's fine after that. <clears throat> I had an interesting case recently. Somebody contacted me actually, through WhatsApp, actually, and said, our grown children are all coming for uh, the holiday of Passover. We have a big feast, everybody together. And one of our, ch our children, who's a nurse, she just got tested by the rapid test, which is just around the outside of the nostrils, tested for COVID, and it came up positive. So we asked her some questions. Her daughter, the nurse, had both vaccinations, either Pfizer or Moderna. And after the second vaccination, she immediately got a, a, a reaction like she had the flu. Again, just for a day, a day and a half. Chills, muscle aches, maybe some joint aches, headache, and then it went away. So, so I said, um, you know, without her getting tested for antibodies after that, the fact that she had a reaction after the second vaccination of her immune system attacking that vaccine indicates that she has immunity. It doesn't prove it 1000%. Maybe she happened to get a cold at the same time that she got vaccinated and it was a coincidence. But I said, this just doesn't seem right to me. They, they, she did a rapid nasal test. It said she had COVID. It was positive for COVID, but it doesn't make any sense to me because having had that reaction to the second vaccination really indicates that her body has developed immunity. Well, don't you know, <laughs> she WhatsApp back to me a few hours later and said the place that, that they went to to get tested, their daughter went to get tested for COVID, they mixed up the samples and they got the right samples now. She doesn't have it. Okay, now the J&J &J vaccine, there have been reported six cases of, of blood clots in the brain with stroke and I believe death out of 7 million vaccinations. That's basically one in a million. And FDA has put a stop to the J&J &J vaccine. Now understand please, the J&J &J vaccine is different in many ways than Moderna and Pfizer. Moderna and Pfizer use little, little balls of fat with, with, the, with the mRNA inside to, to put it into your body. The J&J &J vaccine actually uses a virus, a virus that would infect you, like a cold virus called adenovirus, and they sort of take out the cold virus part of it. They put in the DNA for um, this one COVID protein. Also, Pfizer and Moderna use mRNA. Um, Johnson Johnson and AstraZeneca use DNA. Basically, DNA is like the blueprint in your body, and from there, a mold gets made called RNA. From there, another mold gets made called mRNA. So that's, that's Pfizer, that's Pfizer and Moderna is mRNA. Johnson Johnson is DNA. But anyway, um, FDA has put a hold on it. And in Europe, they put a hold on the AstraZeneca uh, vaccine, which is almost the same for extremely, extremely rare potential adverse reactions of blood clots. Now let's put this in perspective. First of all, it looks like it hits mostly young women women in, in, under the age of about 30 or 40. So in Europe, they, they, different countries have different um, regulations. They've started using AstraZeneca vaccine again, but they're doing it generally in people over age 50, 
where you can see the, the slight risk that there might be goes down to basically zero, virtually zero. The second thing you need to understand though is the risk. So the risk is one in a million, right? There's six cases in the United States out of seven million vaccinations. That's one in a million. Um, what's the chances of dying from lightning? The chance of dying from lightning is one in 500,000. So in other words, you have double the chance of dying from lightning than you have from dying from the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, according to all the information that we have right now. Now, who's concerned about lightning striking, right? Whoa! Whew. Whew. I just missed that. Anyway, <laughs> seriously, moving on. Also, for women who take oral contraceptives, the chance of dying from having a, 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 the similar type of stroke in the central venous system in the brain is one in 200,000 per year in, in a woman a year. So, so far we see in one year with the vaccine, you have to wait longer for the year to complete. But so far it looks like the chance of dying from the vaccine for a reproductive age women, and it could be some others, but it's generally reproductive age women, is one in a million. And the chance of dying from a the same most similar stroke, not exactly the same platelets or unaffected, but it's, that's a complication, but of dying from a stroke for women who, um, who take the oral contraceptive is five times the risk. So please, let's put it into perspective. But hey, if you're a woman, if you're under the age of 40, go ahead and take Pfizer or Moderna, um, which there's been no, no such issues uh, with everything we've seen. Now, let's go on to vaccine effectiveness. On a national level, Israel has led the world in vaccinating its population. And once Israel got the vaccinations going above 50, 60, 70% of the population, you saw the number of COVID cases crashing down. Now almost everybody in Israel is vaccinated and the number of COVID cases have just crashed. And the number of hospitalizations and deaths from COVID have just crashed and they're heading towards zero. There is no question, folks. There's no question that the COVID vaccinations are protecting people and getting rid of COVID. Now, understand this. The vaccinations work in about, if you have to if, if, take Moderna and Pfizer, after two vaccinations, about 95% of the people have antibodies. Actually, after one vaccination, it's heading up towards the 90s, 90 percentage, approximately 88, 90 of how many have antibodies. But still, you get that second vaccination, you get a very deep memory cell and high levels of antibodies, but it only happens to 95% of the people. So they're gonna be 5% of the people who get a Pfizer and Moderna, both vaccinations. They wait two weeks afterwards to develop antibodies. 5% don't make, don't get antibodies. So if you hear, yeah, oh, one guy, some guy got, got the vaccination, Pfizer, Moderna, got both vaccinations and got COVID. What's that prove? Nothing. Nothing is to be expected. It's rare. If everybody got vaccinated, then that one rare person wouldn't even occur. Right now it's one out of 25% or not protected. If everybody gets vaccinated, then what's gonna happen is the COVID is just not gonna be flying all around, exposing that small number of people who don't have immunity. So those who don't get vaccinated are putting the others in danger and really unnecessarily, as well as putting themselves in danger. So Israel has proven beyond a shadow of a doubt that vaccinations with the COVID vaccines wipe out COVID, wipe it out to down virtually zero and they're still finishing up vaccinating. By the way, Israel's now opening up its borders. People are flying in. They have to get special permits, but there are lots are flying in, coming back. They test you at the airport. So the, the vaccination program, it flat out works. Europe. Europe has been slow to get their vaccination program going. And as a result of that, in many countries in Europe, they've seen now a fourth wave of COVID shooting upward because they just didn't get the job done yet. Now, Canada is the same way. Canada has a very bad performance so far of vaccinating their people. And in Canada now, the Brazilian variant is now shooting upward in Canada. So now let's take the United States. United States has been doing a pretty decent job of vaccinating its people. Um, so far, approximately about 30% of people have already been vaccinated. 
uh, in the country with two vaccinations have full immunity. Then another 20% or so have already had COVID, which gave them immunity. So that's 50% immunity. And now I would have told you, given that there's another, make up a number, right? 30% of people age 20 or under, that they're not, they're not getting the virus for, for the most part. It's very rare. I always say the United States is almost there. However, what's happened is the UK variant has come in now. It's sweeping through the United States. And if someone is vaccinated or someone has had COVID, they can fight off that UK variant. If they do get it, they get a very mild case. Most don't even get it. But it's infecting people under the age of 30, 40, 30, 20, under the age of 10. So all those young people that previously I might have said, or I would have said, I don't think they need to get vaccinated. And the UK version now is infecting them. So if you say now there's 50% of the United States that has either been vaccinated or had COVID, so they're safe from the UK version, um, that leaves about 150 to 170 million people in the United States that are not yet protected and the virus is now spreading. And we are in danger of ourselves going into a fourth wave. If those people could just hang on, they could just hang on with masks, have people who are around them wear masks um, and maybe you know keep themselves isolated to some degree until they get vaccinated, they could all be saved. Um, but that's the United States. The United States is right at the tipping point. In the United States now, we have about 60 to 70,000 new cases of COVID every single day. That's a lot. And the deaths are running around 800 people to 1,000 people dying a day. If you think about that on a yearly basis, talking about you know 300 to 400,000 people dying. We've already lost about 600,000 people. Um, we really don't don't need to lose another 300 to 400,000 people. Um, and if we could just hang on, a li- I know it's tough. I was in quarantine for a year. I mean, strict, real quarantine um, for a year. And uh, until, I got, until I got vaccinated. And um, I want to tell you, it's very, very tough. On the other hand, if you learn a little history, this is not like people who had to hide during war times. This is not like the diary of Anne Frank You've got plenty of food, water, um, shelter. You're not afraid that Nazis are going to come you know, um, busting your door down, taking you away to an extermination camp. Um, you have entertainment. You have communication through telephone. This is, yeah, folks, it's tough, and you have to tough it out to save your life. All right, so now I've, I've basically answered the vaccine necessity, and also is the United States clear now? Yes, the vaccines are necessary critically necessary. They're saving unbelievable amounts of lives. And also there's something called long COVID. Another reason why I need to get vaccinated and why I do not want to catch COVID. There are, initially we thought about 10% of the patients, but now estimates are 40% of patients who have had COVID-19 have long-term effects. They have long-term fatigue, shortness of breath. They do a little something. They can't catch their breath. The scarring in the lungs of many people, hair falling out, a memory loss, trouble thinking and uh, aches and pains all over their bodies that come and go. And we don't know when this ends. As, I, as I've warned many, many times before, what really concerns me is that, that this virus not only attacks the cells, the skin cells that line the lungs, but it also attacks the skin cells that line the blood vessels in your body and, when you have in, and causes inflammation. And inflammation in those cells are what leads to heart attack, stroke, um, dementia, and many other diseases. And I've been, I'm the only one saying this. I don't know why, um, but, and I'm not saying it's gonna happen. I don't know. We don't know. We have one year experience with this thing. One year and a couple of months. We don't know what's gonna happen five, 10 years out. My fear is, my concern is that five or 10 years out, we're gonna have people who are supposed to have heart attacks or strokes 30 or 40 years later, we're gonna have them five years later from now because of the inflammation. And studies on this showing that people several months after they were completely healed from COVID, about 70% of them still had inflammation in their hearts. Again, another reason to vaccinate, to save your life and save your quality of life and also protect other people.